So today on Project Shop, we're going to be doing a little cleanup over here. We're going to make a steel run. Part of that's going to be taking this cabinet, and I was going to take this thing here apart, but I think I'm just going to get rid of it. I moved it around more than once. We're going to recover the guts out of this. My buddy that does the generators might want it, or he doesn't want it. I want it for that solenoid end. See that? That's copper. There's a big copper plate right there. You know, bunch of little goodies in there. Contact switches. I've been saving these. They got little silver contacts, little transformer, a little bit of wire. So apparently this was good, except for the fact that someone smashed the digital readout. But he he probably wants this, and I like to barter with him because he drops off big things like this big old staters for me so we're gonna get this uh, taken out and then we're gonna use this cavity to fill up with some steel and see what other steel we can throw on here I got some prepared steel from transformers we're gonna take I want to get out of here and clean up the shop a little bit Okay, this is what we got. Ain't got much. We'd be lucky if we break a hundred bucks, but I need to get this stuff out. We're doing a massive cleanup here this weekend. And this stuff is in the way, and I need my trailer to take a bunch of all that insulation and shit. I got probably 20 bags of insulation that built up over the past week. And we gotta get it out of here, so. Off to the scrap yard we go. Okay, so a lot of people say, ask me about capacitors. They have a sign that says right there, we cannot take capacitors of any kind. Now, other yards might take them, but this yard doesn't. And this is the closest and most convenient one to me. Oh, they got a female in there now. Let's go see what's up with her. I need the claw I usually don't let them use the claw because they tear my trailer up the one time I need them to use it they're not even around he's gonna he's gonna bring the guy over now with it That was easy. 
paid. Like I said, we'll be lucky if we break a hundred dollars on this stuff. I did probably have a thousand pounds of steel though on the heavy side. And they got a mountain of rebar back there. Someone's been doing some huge concrete demolition. This is not the scale to be sorting shit. This guy must be new. Okay, I guess we did a little better than I thought. 199.10, 90 cents away from $200. Uh, and most of that uh, 146 was the prepared steel, the two drums. So basically it was around 70, $74 a drum maybe, or 70, you know, around 70 bucks a drum and there was a couple other chunks. And then we had $52 on that sheet, which was really nothing. So, hey, you know what? It's a steel yard run. I never get excited about them because it ain't much money, but $200 on a Saturday, that's not bad. That'll buy lunch for the weekend, put a splash of diesel in the truck, and we can move on to better things. We're gonna go back to the shop. We're gonna drum up some more scrap, continue cleaning it out, and see what we can get into this afternoon. So we'll see you when we get back there. I'm gonna go grab some lunch. Steve's at the shop. I'm sure he's probably passed out somewhere by now. Okay, we're back at the shop and we're gonna melt some aluminum and do a test piece on the milling machine. Uh, but I have to modify the ingot maker first. And what I've done is I've roughly, it's kind of hard to find the center because uh, of this angle. So I did the best I could and I laid this out. And what I'm gonna do I'm gonna start off with that drill so I can get a pilot hole. I'm gonna drill a hole here, and then I'm gonna plasma cut this square out. And the same thing here, I'm gonna plasma cut this square out. And then we're gonna take it to the milling machine and I'm gonna mill. I basically, I need this surface here, perfect. This surface and this surface and this one, this one, I need perfectly parallel. These ones aren't really that big of a deal it's going to give me something to actually hold on to the ingot and what i'm going to do is after i mill that out i'm going to take another piece and weld it to the bottom of here and you'll see why later on in the video why i'm doing all this now this is all experimental i have no idea if it's going to work it's just a thought i have in my head and uh, yeah we're just going to try it out and i'm probably going to when i'm done i am going to weld like some type of handle onto this thing Man, these Dewalt bits with the little starter thing, they cut amazing. Problem is they're hard to find and once they're dull, you can't really sharpen them or I haven't figured a way of sharpening them, but they work really good. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna plasma cut most of that material out and then we'll just clean it up on the mill to make it perfect. We got this thing, we're gonna crank it up to 50 amps. 
We got it on the 220 mode. Hopefully we don't uh, overcut our material. Okay, so looking at this, I kind of got into this a little bit more than I wanted to. I was cutting on an angle and I cut on the wrong angle. I didn't ruin it, but I'm just gonna have to hog out a little bit more material. Now it really doesn't matter left to right because I'm going to cut all the stuff off anyway. It's literally just to hold it. I would have liked it to be center I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to whatever, however far I hog it out this way, I'm going to go the same distance in the other direction. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my chisel and see if I can't clean this up a little bit. That is hot. Now, going forward, this is just a test. When I make my next mold, I'm going to mill these first. I might have to come down in that, in that bottom side with the milling machine. Like, I need to cut these pockets and then face these pieces first. Um, but this is going to get a, a, good, um, a good start problem is I can't even really get down in there I guess I'm gonna have to just drop the mill down in there somehow I can't even really uh, grab this thing I guess I can do it the way I originally milled it I'll have to put a bar here clamp this right to the table and get in there and just clean that little bit of stuff up because uh, it's gonna make imperfections in the final product. And we want the pour to be as precise coming out of the mold as possible. And I got some other thoughts to do with the mold itself to kind of make it so that 
we don't get it's almost going to be like a double firing setup you know we're going to have to fire it and then maybe even heat this mold keep this mold hot you know get this thing super hot now we're going to put this over here i'm going to flip this over but let's i got this thing dialed in here just make sure we're on zero i think that's good enough for the girls we go out with <laughs> okay let's take this off this thing here should be pretty well parallel because i had this clamp to the table and then i milled the top of that i don't want to squeeze this too hard i don't want it to deform you know what we're going to do we're going to put one side so that it's actually catching a solid piece and then make sure we're down now what i'm going to do is i have a center point here i'm going to bring this down and we're going to bring this over what i'm going to do is put the this thing in here get a small tiny drill bit i'm going to find the center with the drill bit i'll zero the digital readout right and then i'll know basically all where i need to be probably have to go down a little bit okay let me get this set up and then i'll show you how i'm going to do this now i don't know if this is the right way it's just i'm just winging this so leave a comment if there's a better way of doing this than what i'm doing i really should probably sweep this but this isn't too critical as long as like that's parallel with that i think we're good okay so i use the same drill bit uh that i just drilled them holes with and how i like to find center is you know the drill bit kind of comes to a point if you turn it this way you can get this direction and then you turn it this way and you can get that direction relatively close we got this thing zeroed for what we're doing this is close enough so i'm gonna get the power over here something was wrong with the mister i think probably because i was using water it might have clogged up I need to clean that out still need to order some fluid but i did get this i found this little oil can and um i can give this stuff a shot of oil turn on our three phase and we are red high speed 1800 rpi i guess that's good for this let's turn this on we're just going to make ourselves a little center point we can always come back to that's pretty much it for that now what we're going to do is either run this bit or this bit this is a four flute this is a six flute i'm not sure which is better for steel this is the one we were using that worked the best this carbide we might just run that and then maybe run this in the corners i don't know but we're gonna have to kind of probably overcut the corners at least on these ones these need to be perfectly parallel and we got to make sure that there's no angles so that the, the mold will actually come out of there. Okay, here we go. I started milling on this side just to kind of see how it was going and get my feed, my speeds right. Uh, we're at like 460 RPM, so we're running really slow to cut this steel. Seems like it's cutting good. Um, I don't have the mist coolant. I am running the magic tap in here like this, kind of as I'm going along keeping the thing lubricated what i'm going to do is i have to cut this one i kind of when i was plasma cutting i wanted to make sure that the pieces fell through which 
I, in hindsight, I should have done it the other direction because I cut on an angle and I made my opening bigger than I wanted. Uh, which is okay because this is just a test piece. The only thing is it's just going to make... It's, it's going to take a little bit more material to fill the void. Uh, and I was trying to limit how much more material we're going to use because my crucible is literally at its max to, to get to that 10 pound mark um, on the copper one but you know this is just a test and we're going to correct all of our mistakes on the next one so I'm going to fire this up I'm just going to start running this square I'll keep an eye on my digital readout I'm going to write down the numbers to make sure that I can move it over and replicate it and here we go we're just going to start working our way around this thing until we get completely flush corners Okay, so the pocket's a little bit bigger than I was expecting, but it came out really nice, okay? Pretty sure I got all of the cuts out, but like I said, this is a test. I wrote down the numbers were 90 and 90 on these sides this way, and then these numbers were gonna match on the other side, but on the plus, these were like negative, uh, so as long as the digital readout is right, what, what's most important is the bottom number, the y-axis, or this way. That's got to be 90. These have to be parallel here. These ones here on this side don't really matter, as long as these ones here are the same from here to here. So I'm going to do the real-time lab setup. We're going to knock this out, and then I need to clean this up and weld another plate onto the bottom of this. Okay, here we go. We got two notches taken out. Now, as I'm cutting this, I'm thinking I made these a little too big. Actually, I'm pretty sure I made them too big. I probably could have went half the width and just had two small slots. If it becomes a problem, what I'll do is just weld a plate back in there uh, and then just mill a slot um either way we're going to test it out i just wanted the copper is going to be soft and the aluminum is going to be soft i just wanted a lot to bite to on the jaws so we'll see how it goes we'll experiment with some different things on the other thing i'm going to get this out of here i'm going to get it back over there i'm going to break out the welder and we're just going to weld a plate right to the bottom of this and weld a handle to it and then we're going to try it out okay I got this thing all cleaned up. I, I took it outside and degreased it. I have the same flat bar that I made it out of. I'm going to cut a six inch piece and then we're just going to literally weld it to the bottom. I'm going to go find a pipe or a bar. Probably a pipe would be better. I'm going to weld it to the side. That way there's a handle and then we'll have a pretty awesome 
ingot maker, I'll be able to grab the ingots in the vise and fly cut the top. Still going to have to make some custom jaws to where I want to be able to clamp it in there, but not clamp on that edge. Okay, I kind of want them to sit on the jaw and then the jaw clamp like up here somewhere, mainly on the on the two sides here or actually on the ingot, it's not gonna be matter, it's gonna be solid, but I don't want it clamping on the edge. So that's gonna be a next project. And I think what I wanna do is probably make them out of copper so that the soft copper or even aluminum, I don't know, probably copper so that the copper's, you know, touching copper and not like hard metal touching the copper. Um, we'll see, or maybe even something, I might need to do something that's softer than the copper. So, which is probably aluminum. I don't know. You think aluminum is softer than copper? I think so. Maybe I'll make them out of aluminum and see how it goes. We're going to be fly cutting it. So it's not like it's going to be a lot of pressure, but we just don't want the stuff moving and we want to be able to get a pretty precision cut. I think that came out really good. Like I said, in the future, I'll make another one, but that piece, I'm going to mill those pockets out and the edges and then face this. So all these inner, inner edges are machined, you know, perfect surfaces. Because this ingot here, this is the one. Oh, that's heavy. You know, every imperfection, like that there came out, some of that stuff, I don't know what that was, but we got to get rid of all these imperfections. And we're going to have to come up with a way of like double heating these molds, maybe even put them in another kiln um, to keep the metal molted and so everything settles you know we'll figure it out it's a work in progress i'm gonna hit the time lapse we're just gonna blow through this real quick and get this thing done Okay, there you have it. We got a nice handle on there. Got a nice plate on the bottom. It's, it's bottom heavy now, so it's gonna be hard to tip over. But there is a couple little nicks I wind up putting in there with the chisel when I was hitting the slag. Like I said, this is just gonna be kind of proving the concept. Instead of a solid handle, I went with a hollow handle. And I'm about to do one more thing to this just so that like the handle stays cool um, and I think it's going to look cool so um, we're going to go back to the milling machine put some holes in that Okay, there you have it. It's probably the uh, first metal mold ever with speed holes in the handle. Now I did this, one, just because it looks cool. Two, so that it, it won't get so hot. It actually can breathe and cool down on the handle part. It actually works really good because here it's kind of warm. Here I can actually touch it uh, really good. Now, because I took it out there and degreased it and hit it with water, I, I heated it up with a torch because just in case any water seeped up underneath in between the plates i wanted to get it burned out of there so that it doesn't start any rust and then i hit it with some wd-40 which i'm gonna make sure that when i use this i get it really i'm gonna i'm gonna make sure that this thing gets really hot 
and cooks out any oil, any moisture. I'm just gonna hit that one more time with the grinder. This is nice and smooth. I think it came out great. Um, now, going forward, here's my thoughts. On the next one, the base plate, I'm gonna use a one inch thick piece of steel. And I'll mill, I'll mill the 45s in it so that the half inch plates will sit on there. And then I'm going to actually mill that into the one inch thick plate and we're going to see how this goes. I might even experiment with putting a plate in here and taking some of that gap out. You know, so it's maybe half the width. I think I did a little much, but I'd rather have more to bite onto. And then I'll take, I'm going to have to get a band saw eventually, or I'll just use my saws and cut that, cut those nubs off. I think if I was half the width, I'd be okay with what I got. But hey, you know what? we're uh we're experimenting so on the next one i'm thinking one inch plate mill the pockets and then with the one inch plate what i can do is i can just come down in there with the end mill and make like maybe three grooves right and it'd be like way less than this and it won't take so much material i think if i did three grooves one on the end and one in the middle it'd give it plenty to grip onto and and then definitely what we're going to do is mill half of this down probably about a quarter of an inch so that there is a lip out here that protects that edge and then we can actually i mean we can almost like over pour it just a little bit i don't know we'll see how it comes out you know we want to get it because this thing shrunk, all these things shrink. Okay, I want, I need that edge. See, I'm gonna have to cut that down to here. You know, this one here, I'm gonna have to cut down to here. So we're losing a lot. So I actually need to over pour on these edges so that it doesn't shrink. We're gonna, we're gonna figure it out, you know. I'm gonna hit this real quick with a flappy paddle just to take that little edge off. But overall, I think this came out great. And yeah, stay tuned because we're going to melt. I'm going to start off with something simple like some aluminum. We're going to make an ingot, put it on the mill machine, see if we can't fly cut it. We'll just keep taking passes. We're going to try to see what we can do to eliminate that happening. I don't know if that's possible. We might just have to over pour a little bit. Um, but we are going to be losing a lot. I mean, we're going to have to fill that crucible to the top. I'm kind of regretting cutting that much out, but hey, we'll see what happens. So if you come as far, stay tuned. I'll tell you where we're going, right to the scrap yard.
<laughs> I wind up bringing this thing over here and heating it up and putting some real pressure to it. But unfortunately, we got a blown seal. So it's not holding the pressure. Look at that. It might be straight now. And then our shop made fly cutter. Putting in some work. 